lot about what God's ideal of, for fellowship is for his people. Firstly, like I said, point blankly, we're told it's not good for us to be on our own. We are not, mankind is not made to be lonely. We are made to be together. Right at creation, we are told not to isolate ourselves. And the last two years have really put that to the test, haven't they? The constant messaging, rules and advice was to isolate, to socially distance, to stay home. And this leaves us fearful. Unwillingly, we've got comfortable at a distance, but it's not what we're called to be. We are called to be together. So fellowship is a key to who God created us to be, and it's a key part of our vision here at St. Andrews. But what does it actually look like in the practical day-to-day for us here this evening? Firstly, true fellowship means that you can be vulnerable and feel no shame. As we see in Genesis 2, Adam and Eve, before the fall, felt no shame with one another. It wasn't until sin entered the world that they felt shame. And God comes in on this broken picture in Genesis 3, and he says to them, who told you you were naked? The devil comes to make us feel shame to divide us and stop us being in true fellowship with one another. And I want to say as the youth pastor here and part of the safeguarding team that obviously there are some spaces where vulnerability isn't appropriate. But it is important for there to be places in church life where we can metaphorically be naked with one another. Metaphorically. What do I mean by that? Because that is an odd phrase to just leave in the room. Well, again, it's going to get weirder before it gets better. Like I said earlier, one of my favourite parts of my life here at St Andrews is my life group. Um, And I've been a part of it for just over a year. We've been online, we've been in person, we've gone on walks, we've shared meals, we've laughed together, we've cried together, we've prayed for one another, we've been real, we've challenged one another, we've asked some deep questions of God together. They are a group of people I know I can be completely myself with and I can be vulnerable with them. They are a place where I experience true fellowship. So my first challenge to you this evening is if you call St Andrews your church, this is your home, this is where you want to grow and develop and be a part of the family here and you are not a part of a life group, please do something to rectify that. Speak to Tim, our vicar, or James, who's leading the service, or email hello at semt-andrews.org.uk. And, as another challenge, if you listen to me just describe how I feel about my life group, and you thought, my life group is not a place where I can be vulnerable, then speak to James or Tim, because we would love to get you into a group where you can be. Because vulnerability is a key part of fellowship. Because it is so hard for the devil to divide us as his people when we don't feel ashamed about the things we've done wrong, when we don't feel ashamed of how we've messed up, when we can come into a space with God's people and say, look, I messed up today and I need to do this with someone else because I'm not going to be able to get through this on my own. That is what true fellowship is. True fellowship means vulnerability. Secondly, true fellowship means you count nothing as your own but as something to share. We see in Acts 4.35 in the early church that all believers were of one heart and mind and no one claimed any of their possessions as their own, but they shared everything they had. And I actually feel like this is one of the most countercultural messages of the Bible. So often we're taught to look out for number one, to take what you need, to only give what you feel like you can. This is not what the Bible tells us. The early church held nothing back. They gave everything they had for their community. And it was part of their power. When we realize that nothing is ours, everything is God's, and it is to be used for God's kingdom and God's people, then a lot of our stress and worries just die. But this only happens when we stop viewing what we have as ours. 
if you come into this today and you think, wow, okay, I've got to give everything up for God. This is all I can think of is all the things I'm not going to be able to pay for. I'm not going to be able to do how tired I'm going to feel. Then that's not going to work. But if you think that everything you already have, your time, your money, your status, is all God's already. He gave it to you. And if you just give a portion of what he gave you back into the kingdom, you'd be surprised. Our time, money, possessions are not our own, but generously on loan to us from our Heavenly Father to be employed for his kingdom building. So what are you holding back that's stopping you being in true fellowship? What are you holding on to that stops you from being in true fellowship? To butcher a meatloaf lyric, what have you said to God that you would give anything for the kingdom, but you won't give that? So true fellowship means vulnerability, and true fellowship means giving all you have. Finally, true fellowship means sacrifice. John fifteen thirteen says, Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Are you only doing what you want to do? For us to be in true fellowship with God, Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice. He laid down his life, defeated death and sin and rose again. He gave us the Holy Spirit so that we might feel him with us thousands of years later. He gave it all for us. To be in fellowship with the people, with people, we have to sacrifice. And that might mean coming to church when it's cold and rainy. It might mean giving watching Below Deck a go because someone in your life group really loves it. It might mean having someone over for dinner that you're not too sure you'll get on with. Whatever it means, going out of your way to show God's people, God and his people, that you love them and you're willing to sacrifice your opinions, your wants, your desires for others. That's when it starts to become true fellowship. As a people of God here today, this should be a place where people feel safe to be honest, safe to sacrifice, safe to give their all, not feeling like they're going to be rejected or told that they're not good enough or that what they have to give isn't worth it. True fellowship isn't easy. It's messy and we will get it wrong. But as we begin to reimagine life in the light of COVID, we want the church, this church, to be known as a place where everyone is welcome. A place where people can be vulnerable without shame. A place where there are deep, sacrificial friendships. A place where people give rather than take. Most people here know that when I was 18, I went and I lived on a ship for two years and I worked in an engine room and it was 400 of us from 50 different nationalities living in not a very big ship and I shared a cabin with three other people and the cabin just to show you was basically from here to the edge of the stage and then one step one step that was that was it that was all our clothes all our worldly possessions our beds um, our sink, everything was in this cabin. And I, as four of us were in this cabin. And uh, there was me, a British person, there was so two South American people, and a Canadian. And let me tell you, there's a difference of opinion in those nationalities about what is appropriate and what is inappropriate, what is to be shared and what's not to be shared, and what you do when you break people's computers. Just... There was a difference, okay? And I remember coming from a place where I had my own room growing up where I, um, you know, I like people, but I like them at a distance, to suddenly only have the only space that was just your own was your bed. And then to the wonderful Heidi from Uruguay, that was a movable, like, fuzzy line about whether she was allowed in your bed or not. Um, and I remember thinking at one point, God what do I do about this? Like, Heidi's always in my stuff. 
I love Heidi, by the way, don't get me wrong. Heidi's always in my stuff. Heidi's always in my bed. She always wants to chat. When she wants to chat, she wants to be really close. Us being in the same room isn't enough. Like, and I was getting really, really stressed. And I really felt, and this was so hard for me, I really felt God be like, Martha, suck it up. And I was like, no. No, thanks, God. I'd like my personal space. I'd like my... Um, I'd like to have my bed be my bed. I even tried to get a curtain. I tried all sorts of things. But then one day, I decided I was on a night shift in the engine room, and Heidi, the wonderful Heidi, was doing fire rounds, which basically meant she had to come and check I was alive every hour. Um, and so she came down uh, on the hour once, and she said, shall we have dinner together? And I said, that sounds like a great idea, Heidi. And in night shifts in the engine room, dinner was super noodles. Um, so I said, I put the kettle on to boil. We got everything ready and we sat down. And Heidi, again, being South American and not having any boundaries, went, Martha, do you have a problem with me? <laughs> and I ummed and ahed. But by this point, I'd been on the ship long enough and I'd been around blunt German people and South Americans who had no boundaries for long enough that I just went, yeah, I do. And she's like, cool, what is it so we can sort it out? And I was like, what? Because that's not very British, is it? Um, and so we had a conversation. I basically said, I really struggle with the fact we have no boundaries, blah, 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 blah. And Heidi said, but isn't that how it's going to be in heaven? And I was like, huh. And it's the only time in my Christian life I've ever considered whether I actually want to go to heaven or not. But I thought about it for a second. And I think she's right. That when we're called to be exactly how God wants to be, our doors will have an open door policy where everyone is welcome whenever. Our families will be malleable and malleable and they'll change who's in it from day to day. And our boundaries that we've set up in a very British, rigid kind of way will just disappear. Because the example the early church gives us in Acts 4.35 is that all the believers were of one heart and mind. There was no shame dividing them. There was no messed upness that was getting in the way. There was no way for the devil to get in and divide them. And no one claimed any of their possessions as their own. They shared everything they had. True fellowship means that there are no boundaries, as much as that pains me to say. You can say what you think, and the people around you might say that's not right, because that's a, a part of being in the family of God. We can hold each other to account. But you shouldn't feel like you're hated because of it. You shouldn't feel like you're judged. You shouldn't feel like you're um, shamed because of it. We are here to sharpen iron, and we are iron for each other. But ultimately, we should be able to be honest with each other. We should be able to be vulnerable. We should be able to have a open fridge policy. And I think that's ultimately what we're called to be as a fellowship. I think at St. Andrews, we have so much. We are so blessed. We are blessed in the houses that we have, or the flats that we have. We are blessed in the abilities that we have. We are blessed in so many different ways. And I think we will be amazed what God does when we recognize that nothing is our own. It's all his anyway. So we might as well stop holding on to it really tightly and start asking him how he wants to use it for his kingdom. I think today God is challenging us in some ways. I think he might be challenging you if you, like me, really struggle to be vulnerable, if you really struggle to let your guard down with people, if you think that you haven't you quite yet got to the point where you're willing to be vulnerable with the family here at St. Andrews, then I feel like God wants to work on that today. I feel like if you are sitting here thinking, again, in my butchered meatloaf line, you would give anything for the kingdom, but you won't give that. Today is the time to give that to hold it lightly so that whenever God wants to, he can use it for his kingdom. And finally, if you are living out your faith in this community in a way that is easy, in a way that you don't have to think about anymore, in a way where you've put yourself first, then I think God wants to do something about that today. True fellowship isn't easy. It's messy. We will get it wrong. But as we begin to imagine what life might be like,
let's not go about this the way we think we should, giving what we think we should, how we think we should give it. Let's give it with open hands, counting nothing for ourselves, but everything for the kingdom. So I'm going to invite you to stand now. And if you want today to be a moment where you decide to give it all, you might not know what that looks like. It might scare you a bit. But if you're willing to live out your faith from this point on, in this family here at St. Andrews, in a way that is vulnerable, that puts others first, that sacrifices, where the friendships are deep and messy and weird, if you're ready to live a faith where you forgive quickly and, and just give it all, then I want you to open your hands in front of you and say amen when I pray this prayer. And then the band will come up and um, we will worship and we'll see what else God wants to do today. So Lord, I am sorry for the times where I've held things too tightly, whether it be my personal space, my time, my money, my house, whatever it may be, Lord, I am sorry for the times I've held things too tightly. And Lord, I long, we long to see your kingdom come here, to see your will be done in this church, in this village, in this area, Lord. And so, Lord, we give it all. We hold all that you have given us lightly, and ask that you use it all for your kingdom. Lord, where we need to be convicted, where we need to be repent, repentant, Lord, will you show us that now? Show us how to be in true fellowship with one another, Lord. Show us how to, where the right people are to be vulnerable with. Show us how we can love each other well, how we can grow together in your word and in your, in your presence, Lord. Forgive us when we get it wrong. And be with us now as we worship you, Lord. Amen. Sisters and begin to just gently play. Let's seek him now. Those things that he is stirring in us. The things that God is saying to all that we have just heard. I want to step into more of what he has for us. As a fellowship. Whether it's something that does need his forgiveness this evening. Something that God wants to show you. The new way. If you want to make space to pray into these things. To lean into what God is doing. Before the service, the prayer meeting, we were praying into what God wants to say this evening. And there were a couple of pictures that he gave us. A wine of a, an old bottle of wine kind of in a cellar, a bit old and dusty. But with the words, taste and see that the Lord is good. He wants us to taste and see the wine of his kingdom, the new life that it brings. And then another picture of, of water just gushing down a mountain, overflowing, pour over us.